This NAS tutorial is suited for Raspberry Pi 3 and 4 users, with 1 to 4 hard drives. If you want to skip to a certain part of the video, you can simply use the chapter feature provided down below. Enjoy it! First of all, you need either a Raspberry Pi 3 or a Raspberry Pi 4. I would recommend the Raspberry Pi 4 because it has two USB 3.0 ports and one gigabit Ethernet connection. And this makes for faster read and write speeds. Then you also need a micro SD card. I would recommend 32 gigabytes for that. Then an SD card, micro SD card adapter and a USB adapter that can read micro SD cards or SD cards. You also don't want to forget the charging cable for your Raspberry Pi. Now we come to the hard drives and you can either choose those portable HDDs which you connect with a USB but be careful the Raspberry Pi does not have enough power so you should also get a USB hub, R don't forget to get all USB 3 and charge it up with the external micro USB cable so the power doesn't run out on your portable HDDs. Or you could also just use regular normal external NAS hard drives. For example, I have two 4 terabyte hard drives, but for that you also need to have a special kind of adapter and I would recommend the Ugreen one. All affiliate links are in the description down below. And if you're curious how it looks like, it's like this. Here's the USB 3 adapter and here is the adapter where you can also charge it with a 12 volts power supply. So then you just connect it like this and you're almost ready to go. Then you just take one of your hard drives, connect it here, be very gentle with it, and there you have it. The only thing that's left, just plug it into a power source and to a Raspberry Pi. You also don't want to forget your LAN cable, so just make sure you have that one. And voila, that's how it looks like in the end. So, yeah, just make sure that everything is connected to a power supply and that everything is powered on, and then you should have no worries with your build. And if you don't know what case you want for your Raspberry Pi so it doesn't overheat, you can check out my video in the info card where I showcased a Musi case for the Raspberry Pi 4. Alright, let's start with the setup. First you want to plug your micro SD card reader into your PC. Then go to raspberrypi.com slash software and download the Raspberry Pi imager. This program is the quick and easy way to install the Raspberry Pi OS. Now start the program and choose your OS. In our case, it is the Raspberry Pi OS Lite Legacy Edition. Then choose your micro SD card and be careful to not select your own hard drive as you could delete all your data by accident. You don't want to do that, trust me. After that, we unlock the hidden menu by pressing the following keys, Ctrl, Shift, X. Here you want to activate the SSH option and also type in your password for your user Pi. In my case, Vetho Gaming. Save, and lastly you click on write and wait a couple of minutes. Perfect, the operating system has been installed and now we can continue with the hard drives. Plug them into your PC and format them. Be careful though, as this process means that all your data on the hard drive is going to be removed. So you might want to do a backup if you happen to have some files on it. Nice, now you want to assemble your Raspberry Pi with your microSD card, your hard drives, a LAN cable and a power supply. Turn everything on and head over to your router's website that shows you every active IP address in your current network. Alternatively, you can download the advanced IP scanner and use that one instead. Search for your Raspberry Pi's IP and write it down. My IP is 192.168.2.109. Download PuTTY and start the program. This way we can access our Raspberry Pi with SSH. Type in your recipe's IP address and give it a name. Save it and open a connection. Click on yes, write pi as your username and type your password. In my case, Vetho Gaming. Voila, you're connected to your Raspberry Pi. Now it is time to code. Type in sudo raspberry config to access the configuration page and change the keyboard layout and your local time if needed. After that, you type in sudo apt update and end sudo apt upgrade. This does two things. It first scans if there are any available updates and then installs them on your Raspberry Pi. Next, we want to install the NTFS package on our hard drives by typing in sudo apt get install ntfs 3g. 
After that, with sudo f disk minus l, we get a look at the connected hard drives. There we can see my two portable 1TB HDDs and another two external 4TB HDDs. Important for us are the device names. In my case, it's slash dev slash sda2 slash dev slash sdb2 then slash dev slash sdc1 and slash dev slash sdd1. Note them down as we need them later on. The next step depends on how many hard drives you have. Since I have four, I need to create four different folders for each HDD. Now I add a new user called Vatho or any other username and create a strong password for it. This will be important later on when you're trying to connect the NAS with your phone. Next, we type in id u Vatho and id g Vatho. This gives us an ID which you should note down. Afterwards, we open the nano interface with sudo nano slash etc slash fstep. Carefully copy the text shown in the video one, two, three or four times and don't forget to adjust the names of the hard drives. This connects them to the folders we made earlier. Exit the file, save it and type in sudo reboot for your Raspberry Pi to reboot and save the changes. Now we can finally install Samba with sudo apt-get install samba samba-common-bin. Confirm the installation and sit back as this will take a lot of time depending on your network connection. Also, don't forget to select no. Once Raspberry Pi is done installing Samba, we type in the following command to make a copy of the Samba configuration file. Open the file with sudo nano slash etc slash samba slash smb.conf and go all the way down. Copy the following text and make sure you have the right amount of hard drives showing up there. In my case I have 4 HDDs and therefore I copied it 4 times and adjusted the names. After saving and exiting the file, reset the Samba service with service smb restart. Type in your password to authenticate the process. After the complete authentication, you type in sudo smbpasswd-avatho and create a master password for your Samba server. Awesome, we are almost done with the basic functions of the NAS. Let's move over to the file explorer and click on the button map network drive. Here you can assign a volume name and type in the file path beginning with backslash backslash your IP of your Raspberry Pi, another backslash and NAS1. Click on finish. The only thing left to do is log in with your username and master password and you're done. Continue the step a couple of times if you have multiple hard drives. And that's it, we have hooked our NAS to our Windows PC. However, we are not completely done yet. We still have to include an option to backup or synchronize the folders. Let's say I copied my data on NAS1 and I also wanted the NAS to be able to synchronize the folder with NAS2 automatically, so I do not have to keep doing it all by myself. To achieve this, we first install rsync and then go to the log directory with cd slash var slash log slash. There we're gonna create a log file for our cron jobs with sudo touch cron jobs dot log. We also want to include write permissions with sudo chmod aka change mode o plus w cron jobs dot log. After that, we go back to the media folder and create a backup script using sudo nano backup1.sh. Here we need to add the following text at the top called hashtag exclamation mark slash bin slash bash. Make a new line and type in the cone shown on the screen. Minus V shows the copied content on the shell. R copies the folders and the contents. The minus minus delete option is making sure that any file that gets deleted in the source folder is also getting removed in the destination folder. With the minus minus exclude option we can exclude specific files or folders from being copied or deleted. At the end we declare the source folder and the destination folder, in my case I'm synchronizing NAS1 with NAS2. You can also make a second backup script that for example synchronizes NAS3 and NAS4. Then you need to make sure to give the backup script its permission to be executable with the change mode command. After that we open our cron jobs with cron tab minus e, select one and go all the way down. Here we can type in at what time the script is going to be executed. The stars stand for the minute, the hour, the day of the month, the month and the day of the week. So in my case I want the script to be executed every day in 46 minutes and for the second script at 48 minutes. 
We also wanted to lock all the outputs from the cron job, and for that we just need to type in two closed triangle like brackets and then the destination of the log file. And at the end we type in two greater and one. And if you want to know what this means, you can visit the link in my description down below. Save and exit. And in any moment the backup scripts are going to be executed. Alright, now has been five minutes and let's see what happened. With cat slash var slash log slash cronejobs.log, we can check and display the content of the log file. And here we see everything we need. Now let's open the NAS folders and see what happened. As you can observe, all files, folders and even hidden folders were copied while the old data on the destination folders got erased. Amazing, we have finished building and coding the NAS and its backup script. Now I just want to show you how to access your NAS storage with your smartphone. In my case I'm using a Samsung Galaxy S20 Plus and I'm screen recording it with the Samsung DeX. Open your file managing app, click the tab Network Storage and press the button Add Network Storage. Now select Network Drive SMB, that stands for Samba, and it either looks for it automatically or you can type it in manually. And here you have to type it in like this 192.168.2.109 and the port 44. Your username, Vatho, and your master password. You can also add a display name so you know what this is. Now click on that, and there we go. We have access to the NAS via our smartphone. The username and master password ensure that other people in the same network cannot access the NAS without the login information. I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial. If yes, then a like would be appreciated. Subscribe for more coding tutorials, and see you in the next video. Bye.